Hey guys, uh, this is Chris Derrick from the Bowerman Track Club. We are back with another Throwback Thursday video. This time we're going to be covering the 2015 World Championships 10,000. Uh, and I'm honored to be joined by two women who do not need any introduction, least of all from me. Uh, we have Olympic medalist, four-time Olympian, and uh, New York City Marathon champion, and Bowerman Track Club coach, Shalane Flanagan. Shalane, welcome on. Hello, Chris. Thanks. And uh, normally, Shalane would be the star of any show, but today, <laughs> the, the star of the show is going to be 2015 uh, World Championships bronze medalist and 2016 Olympian, Emily Infeld. Emily, welcome. Hello. <laughs> um, so we don't have quite the footage we, we were hoping to have from this race. We were able to find the last eight laps online to show you guys. Um, but before we get to that, we're going to kind of set the stage with what life was. We're going to take you back to 2015 in a very different world um, in which there was no coronavirus. And also the Bowerman babes weren't quite the, the thing that they are today. Um, so, Shalane, you, you joined... Uh, Jerry's group, I believe in around the 2010 range and trained, you know, with one or two other people for, for a lot of that time. Can you kind of give us a, a flavor of what things were like for you in 2015? Yeah, the, well, in, I joined actually in 2009 and the landscape was very dude -ish. I was the only female to have joined Jerry's group and I basically begged him to coach me. He said he didn't coach women. And he said, <laughs> Very much except the fact that I would probably not have any training partners. So I joined kind of knowing um, that he preferred to coach men, um, but I was hoping to um, change his mind with uh, my perseverance and my dedication. And um, I slowly worked at him um, and we did, I did have a few various training partners, Kara Goucher, Lisa Yule. Um, and then finally Emily joined and thankfully I didn't scare Emily off and she stuck <laughs> stayed with me. So we have been together for, um, quite a while now. And, uh, but yeah, in 2015, that was the first time really that Emily and I got to significantly train together really continuously because prior to that she'd had an unfortunate amount of injuries and it was a lot of highs and lows to get to that point. Yeah, so I'm, I, I've always found it very ironic, you know, Jerry's whole, like, wasn't going to coach women at first, and now that he has probably the best women's training group in the world, or at least I think so. Um, <laughs> so, Emily, uh, you joined, we joined the same time uh, in the fall of 2012, but the first couple of years for you, pretty rough with injuries, I think it's fair to say. Um, <laughs> and you, you started, you broke out that season at the Peyton George, or Stanford Invite 10K. Um, you've been training for like six weeks. I think your goal at the time was just, just get the USA standard. Can you, can you bring us back to that time, um, kind of early 2015, what your mindset was and what it was like to kind of get to, to literally get back on track? Yeah. So I, mostly in college, I was 1500. I moved up to the 5k at the end. Um, but I still considered myself more of like a mid distance athlete and had, um, as you and Shane both said, a kind of a slew of injuries. So I didn't have much consistent training my first two years in the group. And uh, because of that, hadn't gotten to do a whole lot of racing and got back to workouts probably yeah, maybe six weeks before that race. And they were just kind of garbage. <laughs> they, were, <laughs> they weren't very good. And I think Jerry had me do an all at 400. And I don't know if I broke 70. I think I went out too hard and I just died. And he was like, <laughs> I can't even put you in a 5k. Like you can't run 70 seconds. Like we're going to have to put you in a 10k and just, uh, you'll go out in 515 and hopefully you can maintain that pace and just see how it goes. So that was my game plan. <laughs> and, uh, yes, I mean, I was there that night and it was, it was really cool because we both had, we had all seen, um, how much, you know, the in, like the injuries cycle that you had been in, but also like how hard you've been working. You've been doing like three hour aqua jogs and stuff, which honestly is Emily is still breaks, yeah, it still breaks my mind. It still breaks my <laughs> mind that you're capable of doing that. Um, and yeah, we, you know, you would, we had it was been like, Oh, Emily wants to run 32 45 or something. And the pace keeps yeah. going and, and you're running, you know, 31 mid pace and it just, just keep clicking off the lap, clicking off the laps, I think in flats. Um, and you ended yeah. up, I think running 31, 42, 45, I don't know. 31, like 38. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I remember it. All right. Yeah. Um, so what, after that race, which was awesome, I think at the time we were all like, well, this is the greatest thing that's going to happen this year. Little did we know it was to come. What, what was your perspective on then what your goals were for that year or what you're expecting the rest of the year? I, I was just excited, one, to pull together a race and to know that um, I hit the A standard because at that time they still had the A and B standards. And it just kind of validated for me that I'm like, okay, I'm like good enough that I can kind of be on the radar opposed to just for so long, it had been hard to just string together races. I'd had some uh, pretty good road race performances, but then unfortunately kept kind of having injuries and up and down. So hadn't really run much track and it was just so nice to get out on the track. Um, I think you've been running the roads, right? Yeah, I've been injured a bit. Oh. How nice is it to run out here at uh, 3138? Yeah. How about that? Oh. <laughs> this track is fast. Yeah. It was really nice to get back out here. Are you completely healthy again? Yeah, I am. I'm feeling good. I've been, um, I got, I've had two sacral stress fractures. Um, my most recent one in December, but I'm good to go now. So I'm healthy. I've been back training a bit. Um, really just trying to get into USA's because I haven't run there in a while. So I'm really happy. It's fun to have an event that I'd never run before is my first 10K and just to be like, I actually kind of like this event. This is a fun event. Um, Jerry's super, super strength based. So I had had a lot of strength training um, leading into that, but I still didn't really know what to expect. And I uh, was just happy to step away healthy and then was excited moving forward to be like, that's a, a pretty solid time on the U.S. stage. I might have a chance to make a team, which was fun to think about. Yeah. And so, Shalane, you had been doing a lot of marathons the previous couple of years. Um, but then you came back to the track, obviously, to try to make the team that year. What was it like training with Emily, you know, basically for the first time for the same event, being on the same schedule, um, you know, both through USA's and then afterwards? Yeah, getting back to train with Emily was like a breath of fresh air. I'd been kind of grinding out a lot of marathoning. And I had just come off of one of my worst Bostons, unfortunately. The year before, I had my best Boston where I ran 222 and uh, an American record on the course. Um, and then I had just a really rough one. I think I was just really tired kind of hitting the doldrums of marathoning and training alone. So getting the opportunity to train with Emily for track season got me so excited and to turn around and see her come off of this long string of injuries and to see this kind of like, Ooh, there's something there. Emily has something in her <laughs> that is coming out. This is, this is super special. We had very low expectations sending her to Stanford and to see how natural of a fit she was to the 10 K just the huge pump and engine that is in Emily. We just knew that, really great things could happen, but it was hard because you didn't want to get too excited. You didn't want to um, get ahead of ourselves. But that night when she ran Stanford, I wasn't there. Unfortunately, I was actually in Portland hosting Colleen Quigley. And, you know, we had set the stage to Colleen like, oh, she's, she's not in great shape, but we're just hoping she'll get like a qualifier for USA's. And of course, we watched the splits go by and we're waiting for her to fall off, fall off. She never falls off. And runs 31:38, which is the standard to go to world champs. So, so blown away and excited that night that I didn't sleep. Um, and was, when she got back, you know, Jerry obviously concocted a training plan moving forward, and I could tell he was really excited about the potential of what Emily could do that season. So, in true Jerry fashion, we were back up to the mountain, headed to Park City. Uh, ready to uh, grind it out to get um, prepared for U.S. champs, which were in Eugene that year. Um, I'd love to talk to you, Emily, real quick, just about your mentality going into world champs. Um, and I'll kind of make this personal for me. because So I ran the world championships 2013, and I was certainly just – I was kind of very – I was kind of just happy to be there. Um, it was my first team. I'd been a little injured going into the world champs, and I, I pretty much just wanted to kind of – make it through in some ways, which I'm not particularly proud of. But I do remember talking to Jerry after the race and he was talking me through it. And he said something I always remember is basically like, you know, there's very few people in the sport who kind of can go into every championships and know they're going to compete at the top. And then there's a small number, but a slightly larger number, you know, who 
if you work really hard and everything goes right, you get like one or two chances to really do something special on the international stage. And, uh, you know, when that time comes, you have to seize it. And I don't think anyone would have expected that one of your chances might come at this race in 2015. So when you went in, how did you, or did you kind of avoid the like, wow, this is so exciting to be here in my first world champs that I didn't expect and actually think about achieving at that race? Or was that not an issue when I'm just completely no. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. No, I mean, I think I went through all those same feelings and emotions. It was a total whirlwind season because I hadn't, I mean, I hadn't run track uh, since, 2012. So I, it had been a long time. So I was just number one, so happy to be back out on the track. And I think kind of stunned that I was like, all right, I found this new event, um, that I'm pretty good at, uh, was fun to do that. And then to make the team, I was so stoked and excited, but I think, um, because we went back up to the mountains and then kind of got back to work, it was more so just like, all right, like just kind of put your head down, keep working, keep working. Um, and I don't think I had even the thought of potentially meddling until maybe, I don't know if it was right before we did a time trial um, before we went up to Japan for pre-camp. And I think after Shalene and I did that time trial, I feel like Jerry told both of us, like, you both have a chance to meddle. Like, it's going to be really hot, humid conditions. I think like looking at, I remember him um, saying the last 1200 that people have had to do in world champs and Olympics to medal. And it was like the last few laps, you had to be like 71, 69, and then 63, something like that. I feel like those were the laps. And he's like, if you can do that, like that's what it took to get bronze here. So like, if like you are able to be in the race, that's all you have to do the last 1200. So like, you just have to stick in there and be in the race. And then if you can do that, you'll be able to medal. Um, so for me, I was like, just hang on as long as I can. And having Shalane there was super comforting because I'm like, you know, we've been working out together. Um, so I just was focusing on like sticking by her, sticking with Molly, um, huddle in the race. And I was like, these are like, just try to stick, stick with the people um, that I know. And just having Shalane there was such a comfort. And as the laps kept clicking away, um, yeah, I just tried to keep hanging on. Yeah. And well, and well you did. So we're going to get to the race here and just... <laughs> In Hold on, Chris. There is one one <laughs> bit of the story uh, that I just wanted to preview that I just find kind of ominous and foreshadowing. I don't know, Emily, if you remember this, but USA's was also really hot in Eugene, like really hot. Like I don't remember the yeah. time. It was like 80 or 90, and it was like one of those weird situations where it was hot but also windy. And anyways, it was very similar kind of situation leading up to um, Beijing and that everyone's like, it's going to be so hot and humid, so slow in a kicker's race. And um, it was, it did kind of play out like that in Eugene. Um, but the foreshadowing part for me in this particular race was I ended up, I don't know if you remember, so Molly Huddle won. She um, outkicked both of us pretty soundly, but you were going down the home stretch about ready to claim second, but I out leaned you and out kicked you <laughs> yeah. that second. Yeah. <laughs> and as soon as the race was over, I said, I grabbed you and I said, I'm old and slow. Emily, you <laughs> let up at the line. I should never, you should never, I should never beat you. Like you should never let me beat you like that. Like that should never happen. So you need to run through the line because that should not happen. I'm old, a marathoner and not fast. And I remember saying that to you numerous times specifically after that race. And then even in training, there was just this weird habit of you um, kind of just easing up right at the line. And I kept reminding you, like, run through the line. Like, we got to get the split. If we're doing speed, you run through the line. We need, we need everything we can, Emily, yeah. to be fast. <laughs> and so I don't know if you remember that at all. But oh, yeah. I did no, nip I... you right at the line. And I'm like, that should never happen. So just a little no. foreshadowing to the whole situation. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I love that. That's great. All right. So we're, we're going like to watch the last like eight laps of this race. But um, do you guys have any memories of the preceding, what would that be, 17 laps? Obviously, it was quite hot and humid. There's a pretty big pack for a while. And I think as, as we kind of tune into the race, there's a, a, a decent move being made here to kind of split up the pack a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I I remember distinctly um, going into this race. Jerry felt like there was a great opportunity because in these slower races and more tactical, there's just more people. And when it comes down to just a straight kick, it truly is could be anyone's game. Um, 
and he just felt like the Americans were primed. He felt like all three of us could medal that night. And we just, I think, went in with a lot of confidence, knowing that there was a medal up for grabs. And you can see um, that uh, Molly was very aggressive in her racing style, was up front, um, kind of a procrastinate or, you know, an, an antagonist. And um, Emily and I were given strict instructions to hug the rail for as much as we could and stay out of trouble stay in the back because it would be really crowded and so we did that we were kind of hanging up um, the back but on the rail as much as we could to conserve as much energy and I think that was like a huge advantage to um, Emily and I all righty well let's get to the footage all right so we've got eight laps to go here and do you guys do you guys have any memory of kind of like waiting for someone to make a move that was going to make you hurt or and in fact did like was this the move would you feel kind of jumpy or would you have confidence at this point to know that you could that you were within range of the finish line i definitely felt like at this point in the race i was still feeling pretty comfortable um and was kind of just waiting like i knew a move was going to be made but i uh i don't even like looking at this now i didn't even realize that there were packs like i thought we were all still there i think that's where my memory was like i was just looking at the people in front of me and i just was feeling good and calm and like just kind of chill 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 like i was on the rail i think the entire race and out here i look like i'm a little more on the outside because i think i was trying to get in position for if a move uh was made all right, Shalane, obviously you've got plenty of international experience in these races. I mean, at, at this point, uh, do you have any recollection of sort of like what you expected to happen at the, you know, getting this far into the race with everyone still together? Are you like, okay, it's going to be like just the finish line or did you had experiences where someone kind of jumped the field with five laps to go or what have you? As a pure distance runner, this gives me anxiety even watching just because <laughs> I know it's inevitable. It's going to start to hurt and they're going to throw it down really hot. And you have to convince yourself that you can keep going. Like you can go with the move because you need to. You can't hang back and say, oh, I'm going to catch people. You have to go with these moves, especially this late in the race. You just got to go for broke. So it's one of those, oh, gosh, it's been really slow. At what point is it going to go? And when it does go, it's going to hurt a lot. And yeah. so kind of bracing and, like, preparing for that to happen, um, I think that it's like that internal talk that's going on in your head that you can do this. It's a lot of pep talk going on right there. Yeah, and so, I mean, as, uh, you know, a quote-unquote slow distance runner, <laughs> do, you, do you start thinking about positioning? Like, I know I personally definitely am like, well, I can't get jumped because I'm not going to react very fast to this. I need to be kind of up close to where the action is. At what point do you, do you start thinking or worrying about that, or is it still, or do you still feel like being on the rail is, is the best place? Rail is a great place, but I would say I think – about a mile to go you for someone who's a little bit not going to have that all raw like 400 meter speed like the, some of the other athletes um, about a mile to go is when I would want to make sure that you know I can feel the sweat of Vivian Cherry flick me I would want to make sure that I can uh, feel perspiration I can hear the breathing so that I'm in good position so I think I'm fine up until like a mile to go and, and then at a mile I need to start moving up if, if I can but being on the rail and conserving energy is always a good place to be and Emily did you, did you have any any kind of awareness of like who the big players were I mean obviously you would know the big names but did you have any sort of knowledge going in about like this person likes to do this or is it all this kind of kind of new territory for you no, I feel like I did. I don't know. I don't think I did as much research into that, like into strategy, as much as I just in my head, I was like, I have to stick here. And I just kept thinking of the laps and like the last three laps, like I should go with this each move and just trying to like remind myself um, kind of what Shalane was saying with self-talk, just that like I can do this. And I think each lap that I was there and hang out, like uh, continue to hang on gave me more confidence. But I don't think I necessarily, I knew that people had good kicks. Um, that a lot of women had good kicks in the field as well. Um, but I was just kind of trying to maintain contact. Um, and I didn't know who was going to make a hard push when. And I didn't, I don't think I knew as much about the event um, in that sense to be like, someone's going to go five laps out, four laps out, or this is like, like so and so's move. I basically only knew um, what Molly would do and kind of shalane. Yeah. <laughs> Outside of that, I was like, 
just uh, in like ignorance and trying to just maintain contact. <laughs> yeah, well, those are those are two pretty good leaders to have. I I always remember. Um, I mean, sometimes the the simplest race plans are the best. I always remember uh, in Stevel Cross my freshman year, where my coach was like, "All right, there's going to be like you know a couple guys are going to go out front. There's going to be a big pack." And you just stay there as long as you can and beat as many people as you can. It's like, don't think, just do that. Um, and I think, you know, fortunately, this race, you know, plays out in a way where it's, yeah, you just kind of like hang out there until it's time to kick, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's one of the cool things I really like about this race is that, um, you know, they, the announcers mentioned there's a couple of Dutch athletes. Um, you know, I think there's, there's a couple athletes from, from, there's a Portuguese athlete in there, but it's like three Ethiopians, three Kenyans, which you'd expect, but then also three Americans. And it's kind of like, those are the three distance running powerhouses there. Um, and, but that, that was not necessarily the case in, in the previous decade or so. So Shalane, what, what was it like for you to kind of, as someone who pioneered the American side of that, to then be up there with two other American women, um, in the final stages of this race? Yeah, I think this is a very rare race that we are watching here. Um, I don't believe any Americans ever placed this high. We had three, well, you'll see, but we will have <laughs> three Americans placed very high, um, and it's the highest finish that we have ever had um, at a World Championships or the Olympics. Um, so it just goes to show, yeah, we've come very far. I mean, in my first Olympic Games um, and World Championships, we rarely had um, athletes making it to the finals. If there was a prelim and a final, we, we basically didn't have people in the final. Um, now the 10,000 is a straight final, but rarely do we have anyone break into the top 10 besides Lynn Jennings. Um, prior to my medal, it was Lynn Jennings and Kara Goucher in Osaka, which was another race that was hot and humid. So I think that's where we drew some confidence is seeing how the, um, you know, Americans did like Kara in the hot and humid circumstances that really was like a, a, an opening to do mm -hmm. something. Um, so yeah, very rare, this race right here. It's unique footage and hopefully an inspiration, um, you know, for our future American women, but especially our Bowerman women um, when they finally get to race in Tokyo next summer. Emily, I love I love the move there, the inside move. You really took. Oh, yeah. and, uh, don't leave the rail to heart. <laughs> well, I was like, <laughs> oh yeah, you'll see, you'll see. No, 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 you'll see it's coming. But I, I take the rail away from her and I pass on the inside again. <laughs> we really you, love that rail. <laughs> you give her the don't let me do that. You shouldn't let me do that again. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. So far out when they're going on the outside like that, I feel like it's just like perfect for us to just like snake, snake in there and just blink right. Uh, yes. <laughs> now, if I'm going to critique um, our fellow American, I feel like uh, Molly, if you've noticed, has has been out on the outside quite a bit, um, and Jerry would not be happy about that. Um, oh, but, Jerry's big, big. He's big on the rail. He's big, yes, big, big geometry on the rail. guy. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, two laps to go, Emily. This had. To, I mean, I guess in the moment, you know, you had had such a good training block, and you're such a competitor. You probably wouldn't have really thought about this at the time but given where you had been six months prior to be two laps to go there's you know one of eight women with a shot really seven at this point that's a pretty spectacular story i mean even 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 beyond how it ends just i don't know it just still gives me chills i get excited no oh uh, <laughs> you're the best bd <laughs> i think it was fun because i feel like i when i was looking and i'm like there's not that many people in front of me i'm like i'll definitely be top 10. like i'm like that's pretty cool <laughs> like i was like super stoked i'm like this is 100 um uh, i was also like looking back most of the race i feel like i was following shalane i feel like i was attached to your ponytail like watching every move you made and then towards the end we were just kind of right by each other which was Nice. Gave us confidence. But. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Right there. Right there. Ready? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. She's still got. She's still got some tricks. Oh gosh. It really. It literally. Like I've. I've watched this before, but it gives me butterflies. <laughs> like I don't know what's gonna happen, and I'm like, I already know what's gonna happen, but I get so. You know what? It makes me miss athletics. Like I miss watching races. Like this is so fun to watch right here. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm buzzing a bit here. I can't lie. Um, 
Emily, this is a great move right here. This, yeah. you're like, right, we're coming yeah, up you think to you. She's like out of through. That's Watch. what I thought. I feel like Watch. I was done. There she goes. <laughs> Pull in a china shop. Watch out, folks. <laughs> Ninja move. Ninja. Oh, God. All right, Emily. Hard, though. And like when people are kind of fading around you, a Molly form looks way better than mine also. I like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm dying. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I didn't okay. even think I was so stoked right here because I'm like, I can be fourth. Like, just don't let Sally get you. Like, I was like, knew that she was there. I knew Shalane was there. And I was like, just keep going, keep going. I tried to go outside. Molly didn't let yeah. me. And you looked to the away. outside. She yeah. looked for you and then you snuck in on the inside. Yeah, so then I think she thought she's like, she's gone. <laughs> and then I was right there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then the typical M hangover. She did the typical arm hangover. Oh yeah, that's that is very classic. <laughs> I think we were in shock. We didn't even like realize. We're like, did she really get third? Because it was so tight. We had no idea. Yeah. We just stand there like goobers and look at the screen. Look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like what happened? I love that picture. That I there's, yeah. someone, there's someone has that picture somewhere. And um, so obviously, I mean, this is an awesome moment for for you, Emily. And it, I mean, it's still an awesome moment for me. But there is kind of a unique aspect to it that, you know, obviously in athletics, anyone's triumph is going to be someone else's disappointment. And it's kind of a, a thing about athletics that I think many people, just like high school cross country runners, might identify with, right? Where like you win the conference championship, which means your teammate doesn't, right? And Molly is obviously someone who we all, you know, we all like and respect, and she's a great, great person. It's so like, what? What was that moment like afterwards, kind of knowing it was like him or her or you right there? And like, how, I don't know, how do you, how do you, how did you navigate that? And how do you think people generally should try to, I'm sorry to put that question on you there. No, no. I mean, it's tough. It's funny because I feel like 150 to go. I was so excited to be fourth. And then um, to Shalane's point earlier, I think I was just like, don't run through the line, run through the line. Like, don't give up too soon. And that's what I was focused on. I tried to go outside. It didn't work. And then I was like, just keep running through the line. And I feel like I blacked out the last 40 meters. Like I just kind of went and then I was like, wait, what just happened? And was with Shalane and just so ecstatic. But then just looked at Molly and was at the same time heartbroken because I know, I mean, I've looked up to her a ton and just know how hard she worked. And then I feel like she was, I mean, aggressive the whole race, like put herself in great position. Um, and it's just unfortunate. Like I wish I'm like wish that it would have been two Americans um, getting medals. I mean, I think it's time. I mean, I wish it would have been all three of us. <laughs> like that would probably <laughs> that have been the best. <laughs> best <experience>. um, <laughs> but it's tough. It's hard. I mean, I think you just have to capitalize on the moments that you have and know that everyone works really hard and uh, we all respect each other a ton. And it still is something that I. It's like a tough pill to swallow in a sense because I just. I hate feeling like I had to take that moment away from someone else, but Molly uh, was so, so kind after. Um, I saw her in drug testing and that just, I think she gave me a hug and was just really gracious and kind. And I think um, just speaks of how the Americans, how I feel like we all view each other as competitors. Um, and I think it's, um, yeah, sorry, I'm like rewatching it play now again. <laughs> no, I know. It's a, it's, a, it's a legendary moment. <laughs> yeah. No, I think, I think yeah, you, yeah. You, you obviously said that, said that really well. I think um, there is one of my, hopefully uh, Julian can find this picture for us, but one of my favorite pictures is you with the American flag and there's like a smile, there's like so much joy, but also just like pure shock, like almost like, can you guys believe I did that? And yeah. I don't know, it's one of those, it's one of those pictures, I'm sure we've, we've used it a bunch on Instagram or whatever, but it's, it's worthy of, of reusing. Um, what do you, what were the next, what was the next hour or two like? I mean, I assume there was a lot of interviews and drug testing and bureaucratic stuff, but do you remember the, the feelings? Can you take us through any, I don't know, any, any goofy stories? Oh, I, oh, oh I got it. I remember yeah. one. So <laughs> ready? Um, right after this race, our men steeplechasers oh, were yeah. on the track. And so it was like a really cool moment because it's so rare that you get to be, I don't know, on the track at the same time that someone you really care about gets a medal. Um, and so we had uh, Dan Hewling and Evan Jager coming out to do their strides, right, as Emily was finishing her, like, victory celebration lap with the American flag. And, of course, you know, I, I hung out because I was just, you know, a little celebrity fan and wanted to make sure that <laughs> they care about you were, Emily. You, you were Emily's manager in that moment. 
I was the water girl. I was taking off, you know, the top of her water and making sure she was good. Um, so of course I had to like live it up the moment. Um, because ironically too, this is what's also a little bit weird is that this was Emily's third 10 K ever, um, in Beijing. And when I won my Olympic medal, it was my third 10 K ever and in Beijing on that same track. So it was just like a really full circle moment to be back there with her, with her getting her medal and, and then to have our men come out on the track to have some really cool photos that my mom took of the four of us hugging and they're my probably my favorite photos of my career so that is that is really awesome and um yeah just getting to share obviously victory is wonderful but getting to share it with your teammates uh is kind of the thing that really makes it all worth worthwhile um i don't mm -hmm. sorry i'm getting sentimental yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah emily what, what what are your memories of just the immediately kind of preceding the race or into that night was there a time you kind of got back to your hotel room and you're just like, wow, that, that was actually real. That actually happened. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I definitely didn't sleep. I feel like it was <laughs> one of the, like, just so crazy to me. I, I mean, I was so excited to be there and I think Jerry had put that idea, um, in both of our heads that, you know, you guys have the chance to meddle, like just don't like seize on that opportunity, like just do what you can and try to stick with it. And, um, something special might happen. But I, I think I like, put myself in it going into the race and then cross the line. And I was like, how did that happen? Um, and I just don't think, I mean, I think as a um, college athlete and then professional athlete, I knew I had these big goals, but I never would I have guessed uh, that I would have gotten a world championship medal. I think that just in my mind, I was like, Oh, like that'll never happen to me. Like I would love to try to make a team. And I think I got confidence as that season went on. And um, I don't think I even knew what was happening as it was happening until after then I was like, oh, wow, like this is actually kind of a big thing, um, which is cool. And it was just special. And um, having yeah teammates around was amazing. I feel like I actually had to help me with the flag, uh, <laughs> how to like how to hold it right. And I was like, don't leave me, stay here. <laughs> Like, please leave me always. We didn't. We didn't sleep that night when Emily oh, got yeah. back to the hotel. When when she got back to the hotel, finally, um, I believe there was like champagne. Like Team USA does a great job <laughs> yeah. of making you feel really special, and so they had like champagne and everything. And um, but I think we just like went back up to the room, and we literally just laid in our beds with the lights off and just like talked all night. We didn't sleep yeah. at all. So it was, it was super fun. It was amazing. It was, it was really cool. Cause I don't think we got back until like, I don't know, midnight or one, like one. 1 AM or something. Yeah. And there was all these people who were up and they were like gathering people and they're like, we have someone who won a medal, like come down to the lobby. And like all these people who I didn't know that well. And they're like, woohoo. And I'm like, oh, it's like late. Hello everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. It was um, really fun. Yeah. Uh, that, that's incredible. And Shalane, you were, you were so, um, you know, inspired by Emily's performance that you went on to set an American record on the roads, right? Like a, a month well, later. Well, yeah. I mean, she inspired me so much that <laughs> night that I actually, like, I want to coach. I want to be a part of this with athletes. Like, that was a huge pivotal point in which I'm like, I want to get into coaching, is being there and being a part of that journey with Emily and the highs and lows. Like, that was one of the greatest experiences in my, in my career. Um, so yeah, that was a big changing point for me. And then also physically, I felt like I started to come around a little bit after that race. Actually, I felt better, um, as an athlete in my running. And then, yeah, I went to Tilburg and ran, um, an American record and beat my longtime like idol and mentor, Lynn Jennings. She had, uh, the 10 K record on the roads. And I think it was like 31. Oh, I don't know five or six and I beat it by like a few seconds 3102 or something like that but that meant <clears throat> a lot to me just because she was someone I really looked up to growing up in the Boston area the cha chains of inspiration all around here <laughs> yeah um, yes. all right guys but any anything anything we missed out on we, we should include before before we wrap up I don't know I mean also just that I was thankful for Shalane she was like my mental health coach too <laughs> <laughs> coming off of injury and UCD. I feel like this whole team, that's like what's really nice and special is when you have lots of good people around who tell you that you won't be injured forever. 
<laughs> well, well, the the inspiration has now switched to the other side the last few years. Emily. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go back and watch this race every day until I until I make it. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I'm just going to put it on replay. Wake up in the morning, drink my coffee. Boom. There we yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Don't guys. feel sorry for ourselves. <laughs> yeah. This, this was really great. Thank you guys both so much for doing this. Um, everyone at home, if you guys enjoyed this video, let us know. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell strangers but not in person, <laughs> do it online, social distance. Uh, and let us know in the comments if there's anything, uh, anything else you'd like to see from us. No promises, we are pro runners, but amateur YouTubers, we will do our best to keep you entertained. Um, so for Shalane and Emily, thanks so much guys, and we'll, we'll see you later. Thanks CD, you're a pro. Thanks CD. Good job. Yeah, crush thanks, it. Guys.